All right. So arteries and veins both exist in the pulmonary and systemic circulations. Uh, they will both carry oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. <coughs> but the question becomes, when is each one going to carry each kind of blood? Uh, the arteries are going to carry oxygenated blood in the uh, systemic circulation, and the deoxygenated blood in the pulmonic circulation. And veins are going to carry oxygenated blood in the pulmonic circulation, and deoxygenated blood in the systemic circulation. So what's the real difference? How are we going to be able to tell arteries and veins apart in terms of uh, directionality? Arteries are going to be going away from the heart, and veins are going to be going toward the heart. Veins are always going to be going in the direction of the heart, going toward it. And arteries are going away. This is going to be a directional understanding of arteries and veins. But we're going to look at a microscopic understanding. Our microscopic understanding of vessels is going to include arteries, veins, and capillaries. So, an artery is going to have a thick outer wall compared to a vein, a thick, uh, a, uh, thick middle layer of muscle and elastic tissue compared to a vein, and a small lumen compared to veins of similar size. A capillary is always going to be an extraordinarily small lumen and a, and a single layer of endothelial cells. So this is going to be our, dis, uh, our difference between our three blood vessel types. A thick outer wall, a thick la layer of muscles and elastic fiber <coughs> for our arteries, and a small lumen for our arteries, and for our veins, a thinner layer of outer, a thinner outer layer, a thinner muscle and elastic fiber layer, and a larger lumen. And our capillaries, a small lumen and a single endothelial layer of cells. So when we look at these cells from a uh, histological section perspective, these are stained histological sections, we're going to be able to see that because of those thicker walls of the arteries versus the veins, there's going to be a distinct shape. Arteries are going to be rounder and more circular. They're going to be rounder and more distinctive in their uh, circular nature than our veins. Veins are going to have an irregular shape uh, compared to those arteries. And they're going to have thinner walls. So thicker walls and rounder will be our arteries. So let's take a look. We're going to have a vein here with its thinner wall and its irregular shape. And we'll have an artery of a similar size here. So we'll have a thicker wall and a very round shape by comparison. Now, you might say that, well, this lumen is very large, but if you were to take total cross-sectional area, this lumen is actually considerably larger than this lumen. Now, same idea here. This lumen of this vein is actually considerably larger than the lumen of this artery. The wall of this artery over here is thicker than the wall of this vein right over there. By the way, that's a nerve right in there, because arteries, nerves, and veins tend to run together. Right here, we'll have a cardiac vein, and we'll have a coronary artery right over here. That's the thicker wall, the muscular layer of, a, the muscular layer of an artery. And this will be the thin muscular layer of a vein. Lymphatic vessels will also be running by. We'll discuss those soon. And this is a transverse, uh, this is a cross section of a phallus, uh, which consists of many arteries and veins. So we can actually spot the uh, arteries and the veins within this. So we have arteries and veins, arteries and possibly a vein right there. That is the ureter, uh, the, sorry, the urethra right there. So that's neither an artery nor a vein. Now this, no, it is not another, uh, it is not another cross section of a penis, no. This is a scanning, electron micro, a scanning electron micrograph image of a capillary. So this is a capillary that has been cut and torn, uh, and these are reticulating fibers and collagen fibers around the edges. And this is a scale bar here showing 10 microliters. And this 
is uh, a very small, thin, uh, small, <coughs> thin structure. Now, we're going to discuss two different kinds of capillaries. We're going to have closed, continuous capillaries and fenestrated capillaries. Now, these are two cartoon examples of the different structures of closed and continuous capillaries and fenestrated capillaries that indicate and uh, give examples of the different parts. Now, these parts are somewhat interchangeable. The only difference between a closed and continuous capillary or a fenestrated capillary is the existence or non-existence of fenestra. Fenestra is window. It's Latin for window. So the existence of a window through which substances may be extruded uh, is what makes or does not make a fenestrated capillary. Now, pericytes are cells that exist on, uh, 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 on the uh, parallel to uh, capillaries uh, near the endothelial wall. They sit next to, just underneath the basement membrane, the basal lamina of the uh, capillaries. But they are not parasites, they are pericytes. They sit next to. Now they have a number of different functions, none of which I need to go into for purposes of Cambridge. Uh, in a closed continuous capillary, as well as some fenestrated capillaries, wherever two cells are going to interstitch, you'll have these seams. Much like the seams in a pair of pants, this is where you're going to have two cells being stitched together to hold shape. So this is where you're going to have more than one cell being stitched together. These are uh, held together by desmosomal junctions between cells. They're going to hold together these cells. Now the basement membrane is going to be a, uh, is going to be a layer of collagen fibers and hyaluronic acid and whatnot that's going to be surrounding this substance. It's going to be this tissue uh, that allows the cell to maintain moisture, so that allows the uh, endothelium to maintain moisture surrounding the capillary and really allow that water to, uh, that water fluid to remain, uh, 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 to remain around that capillary network. Now we also have, uh, we'll also have uh, nuclei of these capillary wall cells here. Now it's important to state capillary wall cells, not cell walls like in a plant, because as we all know, we are not ficuses, so we are not plants. Now, these cells, these cells still maintain their organelles. So there are mitochondria, there are endoplasmic reticulum, there are different disparate pieces of organelles here. So you will see a mitochondria here or there. Now, the fenestrated capillaries will have all of these similar parts. The only addition is that they will have fenestrate. <coughs> now, these are transmission electron microscope images of a closed continuous capillary. And we can see a seam right along here. We'll see a nucleus right here. We'll see a mitochondria right there. And here we have a fenestrated capillary. We have fenestra right around here and here. And here, we have a pericyte right here. We have mitochondria there and there and there. The reason we're not seeing any nuclei around here is because we just got unlucky and didn't catch one. That's all. There's no reason why we wouldn't find one other than it just didn't happen to be where we cut. All right? Now, this is closer to an appropriate plan diagram, more Cambridge style, except that it is shaded. So these are the proper names of those things that I told you before. The outer, the thickened outer layer, that thick outer layer, that's called the tunica adventitia or the tunica externa. Then our tunica media, that middle layer of muscle and elastic fibers, that's our tunica media. Then we have the tunica intima, that endothelial layer on the inside. That is the layer that is uh, surrounding the lumen of the endothelium, uh, of the lumen of that uh, <coughs> vascular layer. So the tunica intima is the innermost layer. Then we have our tunica media, which is our middle layer. And then we have the tunica adventitia, or tunica externa, as it is called often. Uh, 
and that is our outermost layer. Our tunica adventitia is comprised mainly of collagen fibers, so it is tough uh, and it is uh, unlikely to stretch and burst. Whereas our tunica media, being comprised mainly of muscle tissue and elastin fibers, is going to uh, constrict and, call, and, be con and control for vasodilation and uh, being co composed with elastin also is going to uh, provide pressure and recoil force. In the vein, because our tunica externa and our tunica media are significantly thinner uh, and our lumen is a bit larger, these will be uh, providing significantly less pressure in these vessels. Our capillary, being comprised of a single layer of endothelial cells, is not going to have significant recoil force. This is going to be primarily for exchange. Now, from the artery, we will have blood flowing through this artery and then breaking from the artery into arterioles. Then from arterioles, we will move from the arterioles to uh, smaller arterioles, and then from smaller arterioles to even uh, smaller ones than that, and then from there we'll go into a capillary bed. From that capillary bed, and you will find out later that I am simplifying for now, um, through that capillary bed we move to a venule, and then from that venule we go back up in size to veins, and from veins we go to larger veins, and from larger veins to larger veins, from larger veins to the heart. Now, within these veins, we'll sometimes have these lunar valves, these semilunar valves. These semilunar valves are much like doors in that they'll open in one direction and they won't allow for movement back in the opposite direction. If you try and push on a door that says pull, you ain't going nowhere. So that's what the idea behind a valve is. If you break that valve, then you will have an incompetent valve and people are going to come through that doorway backwards. So that's a problem for later, um, but for the moment, valves are going to prevent backflow from, the, uh, from higher up in the vascular system to lower down in the vascular system. So these valves are going to prevent return of blood back to the capillary beds through the veins. Now, uh, cut right here.